Hi guys, it's Sandy and we are here with the last of the World Card Making Day videos. This is going to be Art Impressions Watercolor Cabins. AI comes out with these great watercolor stamp sets and I always forget about my AI watercolor. I really shouldn't do that, but they have fun cabins. There's four of them in this set, which are really nice. And there's also trees, these beautiful new fir trees. And they have a couple different uh, trunks to them and a whole bunch of really nice beautiful branches and stuff for them. There's also these other houses and I'm not going to use those in the video today but I wanted you to see them. So there's different ones, different sizes, etc. And I will probably be playing with those on World Card Making Day today because I am going to be working while you are working. And if you would like to qualify to win a card from me, I'm going to be giving away all the cards I'm making today as well as a bunch of Halloween cards that I have made over the last couple weeks shared on Instagram because I don't have little people that I send Halloween cards to. So I'm going to pick some of you who participate as winners. And by participating, I mean you make something inspired by one of the videos that I post today. So I'm using a couple of different colors. They're going to be listed on my blog if you're interested in knowing what the, the colors are. But they're the twin tip markers from Zig. And they're, they have the same kind of ink as the the uh, clean color pens, but they have two nibs on them. One is a rubber nib and the other one is a little writing nib, a little bullet nib. So what I like to do uh, lots of times is to first stamp the main image and then put my sky in before I add any trees. And I wanted to do kind of, I was thinking about doing scary Halloween type of backgrounds, but they ended up being just kind of nice fall skies very muted colors because of the season. So I threw some some of this, it's, it's actually a brown color, but I thought it looked like a muted yellow and I wanted some really soft muted colors for these cards since we are in the fall season and that sort of thing. So there's a, a slate gray and a green gray that I'm gonna be using. So you'll be able to see some of the colors split out from some of this. The, the zig colors, that's just what they do. And sometimes it works to your favor. And in this particular set of colors and the way that I'm going to be using them, it works to my favor. But lots of times it's very frustrating to think that you know what color you're using and then it just pops up with a different color. So that, that's got a little bit of slate blue in there with a little soft yellow, which is actually a brown. And yeah, so I'm just kind of fussing around with the sky a little bit and while that dries I'm going to put some water on the house because of course when you're using these AI stamps you've colored on the stamp itself so all of that is actually marker ink and when you touch the marker ink with water it turns into it doesn't turn into watercolor I should be careful when I say that because lots of people think that watercoloring with markers is actually watercolor but there's a lot of reason why this doesn't work the way your watercolors would. If you're used to working with pans or tubes or something, these have very different properties. The way they move is different, the way they do washes is different, and that sort of thing. The way they act is not going to always be the same, so don't expect them to be the same. Very nice effects, but now I'm going to use the bullet nib on this one to create my ground and just draw a little bit of a line here. Now know that when you draw over top of something that's wet, you're probably going to get a hard line that you won't be able to soften. So be careful if you're trying to do that. Because again, these, these won't melt out the way that watercolor would. So if you made a line like that watercolor, you could get it all soft, but that harsh line right there at the bottom of the house is going to stay. So I'm using water to just kind of give the, the pigment a little chance to move. It doesn't move a whole lot, it doesn't keep going because there's not a lot of pigment there. So I have a little bit that's scribbled onto a, an acrylic block so I can just pick some of it up. It's very much mixed with water so you can see it's really soft color and it's going to give me a, a much softer edge and a softer look to it. But you can add more pigment onto that block and pick up more direct pigment without as much water and get a little stronger of a look. I wanted to just make sort of a hillside coming down from the house 
and just doing a little bit of almost dry brush type work. So now I want to put my trees in. My sky is dry enough to do that. And there's two different trees in the set. One has more branches hanging off than the other. And I'm using just some sticky notes to block off the house so I can add my trees on there. And you can stamp once and then stamp a second time with the same stamp in order to just get a secondary impression so you'll get a lighter impression the second time. It's called second generation stamping. And now I'm going to start using the little little fur ends. Fur ends. Fur, fur branches. Fur twigs. Whatever they are. I'm going to speed up here a little bit so you don't have to sit and watch me painfully go through this. But I'm just throwing a little bit on because I didn't want the trees to be huge. So I'm throwing a little bit of the green-gray color on there. And the green-gray makes a really interesting type of fur tree. So I've got it all stamped on there, and notice that I didn't try to make it all solid with ink. Didn't stress out about that. I put a little of the green-gray onto my block so that I'd have a little extra pick up if I needed to. But then I'm going to fill in a little bit with my brush. Because I wanted some really soft trees in the background, not all hard edge trees. Because the idea with these watercolor stamps is that you can create a look that almost looks like you've painted it yourself without actually using any stamps. So if you kind of hide the fact that you've used stamps instead of letting the stamps show too much, then your friends and family are going to be just amazed at the prospect of getting a card from you that looks like you hand painted every single bit of it, which I guess you kind of did because you painted it with water and let all the color move. So as I'm getting into the rest of this, I'm realizing that the trees are not really, like the, the trunks of them are not really moving. So I'm getting like these big, heavy, heavy tree trunks. And certain markers stick like this more than others. And I haven't figured out the science of all of it, except I usually find that the Tombow markers tend to be my favorite to work with, with the Art Impressions watercolor. But I thought I'd try these because I haven't played with them in a while. At least I haven't until recently. I've gotten into a, a slate of making a few videos with these. Well, most recent times. But those, you can see I've got these big stripes now in the trees. And I wanted to hide them a little bit. So I got the black out. And I thought, well, let me try putting some black in there. So if I put some dark color in between all of that, then it'll hide the fact that I have these big dark marks in there. Because there's sometimes that no matter how much color you put or how much water you put down, you're just not going to move that that basic stamping that got done. And until you practice with these stamps and practice with the markers that you have, both the brand and the age of them, because some of them, as they start to dry out a little bit more, will act a little differently when they put the ink down on the paper. So they're not always going to react the same, even though the last time you used them, they may have seemed to, they may not anymore. So you want to make sure you, you at least consider um, all the different factors that, that could be telling you why your markers are working differently than they might have previously. So I added some dark into my windows. And I'm picking up a little bit of that dark from the windows since there's I drew right on the paper. There's a lot of pigment right there. So I'm starting to put a, a few branches onto some of those big heavy stems that I've got because those tree trunks are still bugging me that they're so big. But I can use that little tiny window as a palette. Fortunately, those nice dark windows are giving a little bit of balance across from all of those dark tree trunks. So I have a little bit of extra color somewhere so that your eye is not drawn only to the tree trunks. So since they started drying, I thought, well, let me add a little bit of lines in there, maybe some, some darker tree trunks in black. And that started at least making them feel like they belonged instead of having these big red-brown streaks. And by the time it all dried and that black mushed in there, I think it came out pretty nice. 
overall. So I'm going to show you some other ones. And these are other layouts for these cabins. Just to give you some ideas. So if you get the stamp set and you're like, okay, which side do I put the tree on? Which side do I put the house on? Then you'll have a couple different ideas. So you can go to my blog and pin the individual cards if you want to. So that you'll have those for reference when you start making houses and cards. So houses on the cards. So here I'm doing a very tiny sky right above the little section where my house is. Now, I, I probably should have done that before adding my trees in there. It would have been kind of helpful. But I'm going to give it a, a little horizontal line, a little, little ground underneath of it. And then I'm going to just add my trees in here. Now, I started adding less of that, uh, that brown in the, the leaves and stuff. But you can see it's still, you know, the, the tree trunks, I stamped them all at the same time, so I used the same color. I didn't know it was going to make that big old harsh uh, slash mark on my paper. So, yeah, there you go. You have that in all of these. But what I decided to do was heat set this in between and then stamp with the black over top of these so that I could create some trees that would be way up in the very, very front. And then I would have that kind of purplish brownish color behind, but the color in the front would be the black of these trees. And I, I kind of realized as I was doing this, I really don't miss green trees in these. I think they came out really beautiful, even with black trees. Who would have thunk it, right? But it has a really nice fall feel to it, which I find really refreshing based on, you know, like what we normally might think of for, for fall tree colors. So here I was trying to do a really giant moon, a really big moon. And I started trying to paint around it, knowing that I was going to be able to put trees over top of it if I screwed it up. So I was trying to put a few clouds going across it, that sort of thing. And then realized I'm just going to cover it up. There you go. I'm just going to go right over top of it. So here I decided I'm just going to try using some more of the, the brown itself instead of trying to fight those tree trunks. <laughs> I just go ahead and, and give it up and use the same brown color for the trees themselves since I'd already stamped the tree trunks. Gave myself a little bit of a hillside there for my house to live on. And then used my brush and my palette to add more color to them and add a little bit more to the trees themselves and let them be all mushy and brown instead on this particular one. Lots of different ways you can use these kinds of stamps. And then since winter's also coming, I didn't want you to think that these are only for fall trees. So here I've emphasized on this particular one I'm using blacks and grays. And I'll use more of that green gray color in the trees. And I'm actually using black and the uh, slate blue, the, uh, a, a very uh, kind of dim blue color to do this sky, which is amazing to me that the black turns so purpley. That's where the purple is coming from, is that, that weird black color that busts out into purple of all things. So in order to create my trees now, I'm using on top of wet paper, because that sky is all wet, I'm using the green gray to stamp all of my pine trees, or my fir trees. And you can see how soft and mushy they become. And I have my, my moon or my sun or whatever it is up there, and I made my shadows again aim toward that sun, or that, that light source. And then I'm going to leave the ground white with just a little bit of shadow there on the ground to make it look like there's a slight shadow cast onto the snow. So these are great for all different seasons. You can use them for spring cards and summer cards and all sorts of things, as well as these fall and winter. So I hope if you have not ever before tried out the Art Impressions watercolor that you do because you will become an addict like me. All right, thanks for joining me. Be sure to check the blog for more on World Card Making Day giveaway, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.